We going live? <laughs> Let's see. I don't know what that little message is. Well, the video is up, baby. I don't know what that is, but the video is up. How y'all doing? Sam. We're going live. All right. I, I, I tried to... Let me tell you something. I really <laughs> try to, to be like the kids in school and be prepared. Yeah, I believe. I come prepared. But for some reason, it's always, you know, I'm trying to make sure. So, how y'all doing? I had to make sure that I could see everything on this end because the camera's so far away. It is Sex Store Chronicles with Sharonda and Spencer Parker. I'm Sharonda Parker, one of the owners of the PPG store. And I'm Spencer Parker, Sharonda Parker's husband. <laughs> and we want to welcome you all to our Wednesday night show where we talk about all kind of nasty filthy shit that people just don't even you know make sure the children ain't nowhere around how about yeah, that put they, up. tell them they if they in your bed tell them get, they gotta go yeah. if you're gonna be on this facebook live because you don't know what's gonna come out of our mouth because this show is strictly for adults yeah. i say put your chair up i ain't say put them out put them up like put them in a safe place for safekeeping put <laughs> say put them up, up. <laughs> this shit ain't for them. It ain't for them. This ain't what the fuck they want. Right. <laughs> so, tonight, we gonna be talking about, we titled this show, Sounds of Love Making. Sounds of Love Making. So, let's talk about why I, I was like, because, you know, it's almost like when people get up to preach and the people say, um, I ain't got to look for no word, the word... <laughs> The word. Yeah, we ain't gotta look for no word. <laughs> we ain't gotta look for no topic because we live this shit. Like this is our life. So come on, start this start this story off. I ain't starting the story off. You start the fucking story off. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> last night, if you if you don't know us, we have um three daughters and we have two teenagers and we have a nine year old. And these children have lived with both of us their whole life. Okay. So this industry that we in is nothing new to our nine year old because she practically grew up in this industry. Yes. Um, and and I'm, let me say this here because my middle child she went through this little phase where she was ashamed of us. Yeah. But you know she grew out of it. You know. Um, and I think the shame basically came because you know she went to school with other people's kids and their parents was like, oh that's the woman that sell yeah. the dicks and you know she got to go to school and. <laughs> She shamed so, or whatever. Yeah, so, yeah. Mean, she had to learn that their parents actually loved us and, you know, the kids. They was just, just in grown people business. Yeah, they was in grown people business. But so, this is a nine-year-old girl. Like, she a whole nother breed. I like, was nine-year-old. So, it looked like she didn't got with her sisters, right? And she didn't decide that she was going to try to regulate up in our shit. In our shit. Like and she um, she going to tell her daddy when he was putting her on the bus, because normally... She give him a kiss. And she said, I ain't kissing you. Uh, I'm not going to kiss you because yeah, I don't you. know where I, your mouth been. You know, she said, I'm not kissing you because I know where your mouth been. Oh, because I know where your mouth been. Okay. And so, I was like, you know, I just let the shit, you know, just go on by. Because, you know, she's smart and look at the mouth sometimes. But, you know, I tried to ignore that because I felt like I ain't going to chastise you this morning before you go to school. I ain't going to, you know, just raw you out bad. I'm going to just act like I didn't hear that. So, you know, go ahead. I ignored it. Okay. 12 hours later. Okay, yeah, 12 hours later. Come on, daddy, tell us. We sitting up. <laughs> she going to tell me, you remember what I told you this morning. <laughs> so, I wasn't nowhere around this morning. So, I'm like, well, what, sh what she told you this morning? I was like, she told me a whole lot of shit she wasn't supposed to be saying. But I tried to ignore it because she was all the way out of line. You know, I could see if I had an extra for a little funky ass sugar. You know what I'm saying? Like I usually do. But this morning she came in and volunteered some unnecessary um, information. And then the trip part about this, she don't know what my mouth is. Man, she wasn't even fucking accurate with her descriptions. 
She don't know what's going on in our house. That's what made me mad. So, Miss Parker took up the story at that point in time when she found out what was going on. So I was like, okay, um, keep your sugar. We don't want it. Like, so she was basically feeling like she was going to border her sugar to keep us from being intimate. To keep us from being intimate with each other. So in other words, if y'all want to kiss me, then y'all have to agree right here with me right now that y'all ain't going to be intimate with each other. So you know I had to let this fucking nine yo have it, right? And I had to let her know in my exact words, I ain't about to stop fucking your daddy. <laughs> and I said it just like that. Because see, let me, and, and this is why I want to talk about this. Because I think a lot of times people set unrealistic expectations about marriage when it comes down to their children. They don't let their children see what marriage is supposed to be. No. Marriage, you are supposed to be intimate, and there are different levels of intimacy. You can be intimate by just touching each other, by kissing each other, just by holding each other, conversating, communicating with each other. It's so many different levels of being intimate, yeah. but and, you can and, also and, be intimate in the bedroom. Yeah. Go ahead. And then with your kids, like it, it don't matter what kind of intimacy you're going through. Like My personal experience is they're going to be grossed out by whatever we do. So, like... If that's what you trying to hide your kids from, you don't want to you don't want to see them acting out and oh, oh that's nasty and all this type of stuff. Like they gonna do that because they kids and you, they look at you as their parent and y'all not y'all don't have feelings or emotions and stuff like that. Y'all just and you only supposed to kiss them. Yeah. Now and, and children are very selfish. Yes. They're very selfish because they feel like all of your time and attention has to be devoted to them. For example, you have some people, they kid and dance, they kid and chill eat, and they kid in all the different auxiliaries at the church. Then they kid in this club and that club. And you basically ripping and running for them yeah. the whole weekend, all weekend. At what point do you have time for your spouse? You don't. You don't? Not really. And a lot of times, y'all don't make time for each other either. So that's another problem where the kids start to think that they are the center of everything. And the sun's rising, sitting in their ass. Yeah. So, you know, we really had to set the record straight because our older daughters, the teenagers, started laughing at the nine-year-old because they like, they oh. They already know how it's they, going. They like, oh, you thought you was going to come in here and regulate and stop them from having sex with each other? Girl, like, we've been here longer than you. You ain't about to stop them from having sex? Like, apparently, <laughs> yeah, apparently this conversation has got more refined over the years and now we're able to talk about it in a civilized manner because it used to be like, go y'all motherfucking ass to bed and don't be worried about what the fuck we doing up there. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that ain't none of your business. But now it's like, we older and we know, like, at a certain point in time, we had to talk to our kids and be like, you know what I'm saying? We married. And sometimes the sounds y'all hear ain't us arguing or us, you know what I'm saying, hurting or trying to, like, it's, it's us enjoying each other. And you might hear that you're supposed to be asleep. But if you're not, this is what you're hearing. You're hearing us being intimate with each other. And it's the and truth. And it's okay. And that's the thing because I did a party and um one of the questions, it was a co-ed party, and one of the questions was, what is one of the things that your spouse say during sex? And the man literally said, she don't say anything. So when she came back in the room and she had to answer the question, and we said, what sounds do you make during sex? And the woman said, I don't say nothing because we have children. I was just like, what the fuck? You mean to tell me you go to work every day <laughs> and you have this house that you pay for. You out there busting your ass. These children are eating up all your shit, all up in your refrigerator, watching your tape, your your TV cable, and all these other luxury items that you providing. What? And you can't make a uh in your fucking house. You got me fucked Cause the up. chair ain't gonna fucking hear you. Oh bullshit. Shh. Let's see. Is it because she overheard y'all having sex and it made her feel uncomfortable or weird? That's exactly what it was. She did overhear us having sex. And she said that it made her feel uncomfortable. And we let her know that that's why we buy you earbuds. And that's why you should be asleep at a certain time. And if you're not doing what you're supposed to do, then you might hear some shit you don't want to hear. Mm -hmm. And that's just, the, that's, that's reality. See, in a household with a family, you all have to be able to cohabitate in a household together. 
And what people don't understand is your children know just as much about fucking sex as you do. You know what I'm saying? Like, they got misinformation just like y'all get misinformation. Mm-hmm. So, they know shit, and it might not necessarily be the accurate shit, but they know shit. You know what I'm saying? So if you set the record straight, you make you let them know from an early age. They see all they they see and hear all the fucked up ratchetness that sex have to offer. You know what I'm saying? Like, what the hell is wrong with your child hearing two people who done vowed to be together forever fucking each other? That's the least of your worries. Like, that's what you're supposed to do. That's the shit that they supposed to hear. So when they get grown and they know, okay, parents is supposed to be intimate with each other. Like people who 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 married to each other, they supposed to love each other. They supposed to be together. They supposed they don't just walk around like two separate individuals in life and then just come together and everything just hunky dory at the end of the day. That's not how shit work. You gotta give them a realistic view of what life is. Now, am I saying that you supposed to be uh hanging from the ceiling in front of in front of children? Chair, no, fucking with the that, baby in the bed. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is when you have children, you have to let them know that it is okay for adults to be intimate with one another. And and what was the next thing I asked her? I I and I told this to my cause see, I, I believe in teaching real life. I let my nine year know, look, if I don't fuck your daddy. Somebody else will be glad to fuck your daddy for me. And then your daddy going to be living somewhere else. Do you want your daddy to go live somewhere else? She said, no. Okay, well, you got to be all right with me doing what I need to do as a wife. Because I am a wife. A lot of people don't want to have these kind of conversations with their kids. They don't want to have to put it all out there on the line. Like, that's why society is so fucked up. Like, we do all, we do stuff backwards. Like, we keep the, the, the... the subjects that we supposed to be up front and open with our children about, mm-hmm. we keep that closed and hidden. All the ratchet shit, we let them go out there but, but and the experience thing. for themselves. They got Instagram, they following strippers, they watching World Star. That's what I'm they saying. They on BT, MTV. We hear they, every, they on every YouTube. single rapper. I listen to music. They every on everything. Day. I got three daughters. I listen to music every day. They talk about bitches and hoes and. Fuck this and that, you know what I'm saying? And on the same album, you got you might got a, a song where he talking about throwing all the money at the strippers and all this. And the, and the next song is "Oh My Old Lady," I love her to death, and it's like, but they get all of this, you know what I'm saying? They get all angles of everything. So why not give them the real, a real life? I know that everybody run their household differently, but one thing that I have vowed to do. Is to remain true to myself and be sex positive. And I don't hide certain aspects of sex from my children. Sex is a conversation that is talked about in our household very openly. Like we sit at the yeah. dinner table and have conversations about sex. For example, if you and your husband were lawyers, I expect when y'all at the dinner table, y'all probably going to talk about love. Mm-hmm. If if you your have kids, a set of parents that are doctors, they're gonna know a lot about law. They're gonna know a lot about law. They're gonna be, yeah. yeah. If you are doctors, you're gonna talk about medical shit and all this stuff. That's what y'all talk about the, at the table. Our children, we are in the adult industry. We talk about certain aspects of the adult industry because believe it or not, our kids come to us and ask us for information. Mm-hmm. They ask us, hey, I heard this. Is this correct? But the thing about it is, like, we have children who are not overly sexual. They they, they kind of desensitize to it. They know about it because it's not something that they got to go out there and try to look for because they get all the information at home. So our kids act a totally different way than other you. People would think that they promiscuous, promiscuous and, and they're not. They got all of these um, sexual issues, but our kids know about sex. Like, it's not nothing that we worry about up in here because I know, like, they're going to be responsible with that, if nothing else. And I think with our kids, because uh, sex is talked about so openly in our household, it makes them more cautious yeah. when it comes down to Because they sex. have way more facts than the average child right. their age. So, they able to really judge and, and and be good judges of people and, and mm-hmm. stuff that's going on around them like they know because like in all actuality like in in they 
all of the age group, like sex is prevalent in everything. Like all of them little children, like we know how we was when we was their age, especially teenagers. And they be at, and I don't understand why grown people act like they put something used to jump when they was sharing. Oh my Jesus. And I know it did because mine did. I'm talking about and I'm talking about our teenage years, fellas. You know, we was jack off artists like it was on and popping at any given time. Everywhere. And that's the thing. Like, you ain't never got to give your sons permission to touch them, set they stuff. They going to touch their stuff your regardless. Your boy is jacking off. Yeah, guys. but it's like if you hear about your daughter masturbating, you get upset. And that's crazy to me. So, it's like, you know, it's but always these want double standards. Sex. Yeah. No, they don't want them to have sex. But they don't want them to masturbate either. You don't want them to do nothing? Just let it jump and ignore it. That's what they want them to do. And then you're going to have a problem when they get cut loose. <laughs> <laughs> but you know I, it's like I know other households are not having these conversations my daughter goes to bed every child her, her friends are always asking her questions to come back and ask me because this stuff that they can't go to their parents and these girls are over eight, are, are 18 yeah, and grown over they too. grown so, but it's like I just believe in setting realistic expectations about marriage because I didn't grow up in a house and see marriage. I didn't see um, my mama living in a household with one man every day, all day. I ain't see that shit. I saw a lot of people. Well, so I, I don't know what marriage was. What my situation like. was, Pops, that shit was complicated. I seen my Pops all the time, but you know. He was who he was. <laughs> he did his shit. But I'm talking about in a sexual way. Like, I don't want to fuck these people, but, you know. Yeah, but, like, I, my daddy was always there, even if he wasn't in the household with us. Like, I seen him all the time. So, I kind of got, like, a certain idea of, like. But did you see your parents be intimate with one another? Not, like, sexual intimate, but I'm just saying, did you see intimacy? Yeah, like, they was affectionate with each other. Like, you see them be, like. They wasn't husband and wife, but you see them be like husband and wife sometimes. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, they talk to each other. They hug, kiss, all that other shit. So, you see that sometimes, even if he wasn't there every day. You see what I'm saying? He mm -hmm. didn't live there, but you see him. I seen the nigga damn near every day. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you, I saw it. Right. So, you get some well, idea. Even if he was off doing some other stuff, he ain't yeah. in the business. Like, you still seen some of what you were supposed to Okay. Be. And, and on my end, like, I didn't see no intimacy, no affection. I saw a lot of motherfuckers come through. No, and that's what a but lot I ain't of, see no intimacy what, and no affection. That's what a lot of kids and, and that's what seen. a lot of kids see. Yeah. Yeah, they see motherfuckers coming through. But shit, I mean, you know they fucking. But you ain't seeing them, like, loving, dovey kissing and hugging and being, One like, thing about it, like, couples I, 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 pay, I, I pay the cost to be the boss in this motherfucker. It's old school laws in effect around here. Like, ain't no fucking child about to run my household. So you can come and feel how you want to feel, but as long as I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, my bedroom ain't defiled. So what you saying ain't ain't got no bearing on what, you, what you're what you going to do is go over here in this little section I done provided for you huh. and make your little self comfortable while I go up here and handle my business. And send to my do. mama. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you do. That's what the fuck we do. Listen, gonna do. I guess I'm, I am kind of happy though that she was bold enough to come with her concerns to us because it seems like she had to address it with her older sisters and they was like, girl, you go ahead and try yeah, if you want to. But, on her own you know, and they left. Yeah, they left for hanging. They was kind of like, girl, all right, go on here. You the last of Mohicans. You think you you going to come in here and regulate after these people been doing this our whole life and we almost grown and you come your little nine-year-old self uh, trying to change up how things been going on in this house all these years. And she went out there on her own and, you know, we had to let her know. She she walked away crying. And um, I was like, you ain't got to cry. Like, it ain't nothing to be upset about. Because we're not about to not have sex. Like, you can be upset and I you can cry. it was more about her not getting away. Yeah, I think it was more about her not getting away because she really thought by telling us that she wasn't going to give us kisses no more, that was going to make us say, well, Madison kisses is way more important than us fucking each other. So we just not going to fuck each other because we want Madison kisses. And I'll let her know, keep your little kisses. That puts it good. Because I'm about to get that dick. <laughs> well, I ain't say that part, but I'm just saying, you know, that was my mentality. Like... You ain't about to run shit up in here. Like, no. I have an obligation as a wife, and I know what I'm supposed to be doing. And I'm supposed to be getting a dick. You know? Yes. Yeah. 
A lot of people will be like, oh, regularly. Lord, they going too far. And that's thoroughly. foolishness. That's disrespectful. That's why you don't do that with your churn. And bills. that's why y'all motherfucking churn all <laughs> fucked up. And why you churn sneaking and hiding. And why y'all rocking babies at fucking 32 years old who's grandmothers. And then I don't like, knock all of that, but I just I feel like you gotta be If they, they do that shit, turn. like if you see my baby walking around, stomach all swollen out and all this type of shit, you're gonna see me walking outside her. You know what I'm saying? In full support because I raised her to be able to come to me and let me know what's going on. Even if you make mistakes, I still got your back. You understand? Like, it ain't about, you know, them fucking up. It's about you being responsible, too, and letting them know that you don't have to make these mistakes. So that's where all of this shit come from. Us being proactive and not reactive. We're going to tell yeah. you beforehand how this shit go down. And I be real honest living. and real, real raw with you because at the end of the day, like... You're going to learn something, and it's going to deter you from going out there and giving yourself to somebody prematurely. Yeah, and, and I just feel like for a living, I literally teach married couples how important intimacy is. So I would be a fucking hypocrite yeah. to allow a child to come into my house that I'm providing everything for her to tell me about what I can and can't do up in here because uh, she just don't like it. Mm. Well, ain't nobody doing shit to you. Like, you got everything you need on the other side of the house. Go go like, over there to your area. Y'all ain't gonna tell y'all children to go out and date a lot of people. We tell our kids, date a lot of people. When you get up in age, you feel like that's what you that's want to do. That's what dating is. Don't just go out there and settle for one person. Pick one person, no. Know, that's not dating. Go date a lot of people. I ain't say go fuck everybody. And that's the difference because a lot of people don't know the difference between dating and fucking people. They think the two intertwine. No. But I believe you could date a lot of people and they ain't never got to see what the pussy look like. Yes, ever. Yeah. That's when you date a lot of people because you got to get to know what the, what the hell you want. But we don't teach our kids to do that. We teach our kids to go out there and... All right. Let's see if we got any questions or comments. Oh, let's see, let's see. True, true. Mm-hmm. Do a bit of y'all on here. Something that got on and something that left. Uh, let's see. Is it because she overheard y'all? Yeah, I said that. I got to the point where I wanted to hide all the noises due to the fact that my kids slept like, bless your Lord, bless your baby. Wait, they asses. There's up. adult time. I always wondered what it was when I was younger. Yes, it is a time for adults. I turned the music up when I was married, but now that I'm single, I don't bring a man around my bedroom. Mm-hmm. You are so right. I'm so glad that all of mine got their own house, and that's what I'm striving for, for everybody <laughs> being their own shit. Cause, and I'm going to tell you something. You know, last yeah. night when I was talking and I was standing in the hallway, y'all, I was butt naked. I was fucking naked. I ain't have a stitch of fucking clothes on because this is my fucking house. And I walk around this bitch naked all the time. She get that fucking luxury. Because I don't have to put on no clothes because this is my shit. So you going to, I'm going to walk around this bitch. I, I, I'm going to do what the fuck I want to do up in See, here. See, that's one of the things that women I, with I daughters am. could I, do. I, like, y'all <laughs> could do stuff like that. Like, a, a man with all sons. Like, I, I can't see walk him around, walk around naked. Nigga, no. A man with all daughters, I can't walk around like that shit in my house. Like, my son's going to feel played. I'm going to feel played if my daughter even catch a peek of me without my, my under... Like, it's going to be bad. So, like, she the only one that can do that. Like, she can't do that with a house full of sons. Like, okay, so. she said, my mom was open with me. And that took the stigma away. While my high school friends were sneaking out to be with boys, I wasn't worried about that. If I wanted to, my mom was available mm -hmm. to me to talk to. And that's good, and that's the thing. That's one See, thing that I always want to keep is an open line of communication. It's not a taboo subject. Like, we, we create now our own society in my household. So our society yeah. in here does not look at sex like it's something that, oh, people ain't going to, should never do, and it's all nasty, and it's all this, that, and the other. Like, our children see really all sides of sex. Like, they see the good, the bad, and the ugly. So they don't have no no fantasizing no 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 fairy tale idea of what sex is they right. know what it's hidden for even down to the nine-year-old because like when it when 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 inventory and all that type she got she take them rides sometimes too to go go pick up stuff from the from the uh supplier so you gotta you gotta know what you're doing like your child see all of this and you can't be uh naive and ignored just like they seeing that with us they seeing that on social networking they seeing that on the tv they seeing it everywhere. 
So as long as you being responsible and telling your children how it really go, and not talking about, oh, yeah, we ain't gonna talk about that. Or you don't know nothing about that. Go in the room and I. Shit, like, they know more than. First of all, they got more. They got access to more shit now than we ever had when we were coming up. And we knew what sex was. And we didn't have access to half as much as stuff as they have access to. So if you are a smart parent, what you wanna do is be proactive and start talking and being open and creating a lines of communication with your kids. It's going to break your heart when you're oh. sitting up there watching that movie and that scene come on and your child get to talking about, oh, they doing this, this, that, and the other. And you really racking your brain trying to figure out how you know about all of this. Yeah. And <laughs> I'm going to tell you something because, you know, I was, I had um, some orders that I had to mail off today, y'all. And I'm just, I just want to share with you just how closed-minded people is. I went to the post office and I had to mail a basket off. And um, I had the basket in my hand when I walked in. First of all, I wasn't nobody in the post office but me. But I needed a box that was big enough to put the basket in. So I was trying to get a box from them so that, you know, I could package it the correct way to mail it. So I'm, I'm like, I need a box to be able to put this in. And the woman grabbing all her chest and she like, oh, oh, Lord. Oh. So I'm, I find the box, put it in there. I'm taping it up. And she acting like she can't even touch the fucking box because the box got a fucking basket with vibra, a fucking toy and, and shit all up in it. And I really had to, I had to really stop her in her tracks. I said, you got a wedding ring on, you a married woman. What's the problem? You, you really got to make people think. I was like, you got a wedding ring on, you a married woman. What's the problem? She was like, oh, Lord, the people at my church. I say so the people at your church telling you that you ain't supposed to be intimate because the people at my church let me know that I'm married and I could be intimate. And the woman that I'm sending this to is a married woman and she's going to use this with her husband. So I did not understand what the fuck the problem was. Why is it that when people, when, when they see anything sexual, anything, they just get so fucking uptight and they get crazy and act like they can't fucking think no more. And this bitch act like she ain't want to touch the fucking box and tape it up because it had a fucking basket with fucking dicks and shit in it. She pissed you off. Huh? She pissed me off and I let her know right there. <laughs> I corrected her old grown ass right there at the motherfucking <laughs> post office and let her know. I don't know what they teaching at your church, but they should be teaching you to be intimate with your husband. If they teaching anything other than that, you need to go to a whole nother fucking church. And if they ever tell you don't suck your, your husband dick... You make sure you go to a whole nother church because I guarantee your pastor getting his dick sucked even if his wife ain't doing it. He getting his dick sucked. You know. Yeah. I, yeah. But see, they don't want to have that kind of conversation because they put these people on the pedestal like they gods and shit. We and all people, people yeah, man. We people. All we got sexual people, desires. Everyday people. It don't matter who the fuck you pass by on the streets, who you see on the TV, magazine cover. We all people. We put our, our fucking pants on one leg at a time. All of us do. So, all like I don't understand this whole. I can't do this because they say, like, do what the fuck. As long as you're responsible, you know what I'm saying. You ain't killing nobody. You ain't hurting nobody. You ain't fucking over nobody, child. Like, do what the fuck you want to do in your bedroom. And we're gonna leave y'all with this before we wrap this up. Keep in mind that your children are only going to be children for so long, okay? It's very important to maintain intimacy in your marriage, in your relationship or whatever y'all situation y'all got going on. It's important to maintain intimacy because what happens is these children get grown and they go off and they live their own fucking lives and then you left in the fucking house with somebody yep. that you don't even know no more. Think about these marriages in the last 50 and 60 and... 70 years. They churn was only there 20 of those years. Yeah, like... You know what I'm saying? The other 50, 60, 60 years, they had to figure out how to be with each other. Yeah. So, my <laughs> thing is this here. This is my soulmate. This is my life partner, my fucking best friend. So, you ain't... Your lit nine, your ass ain't about to come in between that. I don't know what the fuck you think, but you ain't coming in between it. The devil is a motherfucking lie. A motherfucking yeah, I had to say that. Good. got a motherfucking way with it. Let's see. <laughs> talking to the kids about sex is just as important as talking to them about guns in your home. You yeah. got to have an open line of communication. That that's is so a, true. That's another thing they know. If you see a gun anywhere, not saying that we got no guns around here because we, we don't have that type of stuff. 
But if they see a gun, they know not to touch that type of stuff, not to even deal with it. They know, like, if you hear any loud noises, just get down. Like, they know we got a plan up here. We got plans for everything. Yep. Anything else you want to say, babe? I got a whole lot of stuff to say, but you know, not tonight. Not tonight? Yeah. We're going to see y'all next Wednesday. Thank y'all for tuning in. Sex Shop Chronicles. And, um... You know, I, I have a lot of stuff I want to talk about, but it's so crazy because some stuff I want to talk about, like that fucking prostate, that man came in there for that damn prostate. Uh, I would, like, he wants something to sit on, I put it up against the wall. I've been racking he my brain to back trying his ass to figure up out. To it. I fi <laughs> we're going two totally different directions. You get to talk about the shit you want to I'm talking about. Look, I want to know, do they got any women out there with foot fetishes? Because, like, you all, it got more, it got men out there, like, it got men, like, feet, like, men like ass, so it's common, right? But do they got women out there? You know there what? That just... That's something to think about. I'm going to have to research that because I ain't never know no woman to be talking about looking at no she feet, like feet. Or sucking on no toes and looking yeah. on no heels. So, I mean, it's common with men. Like, men, like, have foot fetish. Like, I like ass. Like, it's common. Very, very common. Like, there's, we see so much stuff that y'all think is taboo. Like, it's common fetishes that people have. Yeah, like, they're very common. I don't really hear women saying that they have a foot fetish. No, that's something that I never heard of. And I've been doing this for a long time. Never heard a woman have a foot fetish. Now, I smell sniff the fuck out you. Yeah, I'll smell like your smell. ass. Oh, yeah, I like to smell. I'll smell you. But, but I'm asking I'm, about the I'm going to smell you. I'm going to smell a dick. I'm going to smell everything. I want to smell it all. Truth. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, y'all.